God is a miracle working God. Once again, thank you for tuning in. I believe as the word of God is coming forth today, you shall receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Now today I'm going to continue the, my preaching on the fire of God. And the fire is a, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. When God chose to, to express the Holy Spirit, he chose certain symbols. And one of those symbols is the fire. Now the fire represents many things. Last time as I was preaching, I was speaking about the fire. And that the, the fire brings warmth, brings heat. Whenever the Holy Spirit comes and fills you, whenever you are in the fire of God, your emotions will change for the better. The joy will be much greater. I mean, in the Holy Spirit, there is more joy than in any other sinful activity. When the Holy Spirit fire comes, the joy comes. Now, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, like David, you'll be able to dance. You'll be able to laugh. You'll be able to rejoice and to jump for joy. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whenever the Holy Spirit comes, there's also enlightenment. The Holy Spirit brings light into your mind. The Holy Spirit will show you deep things. It will reveal Bible scriptures to you. It will reveal uh, e even things from the secular world, even from, from different sciences. He will reveal all things to you. Many people make a mistake. They never ask the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is available for every human being who is open and who desires to receive the Holy Spirit fire. Also, the Holy Spirit, when He comes, He cleanses the dross. He removes dirt. He removes problems. Now, the Holy Spirit does not only come uh, once we are totally and completely holy and pure. The Holy Spirit will come and indwell us even though there is still sin in your life. Now, in, 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 in old days, in the old Pentecostal movement, people thought that you have to keep, be, 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 be waiting, to keep waiting for the Holy Spirit. They had those special waiting services. They were waiting and expecting the Holy Spirit to come. They were fasting and praying hard. Listen, those days are over. We are not living in the, in, in the days of the disciples. They were waiting for the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was not yet available and accessible to everybody. The Holy Spirit was present, but not available to all mankind. But since Pentecost, since the Holy Spirit came and moved mightily, as He, as he came and uh, descended on, on each disciple, and when all the people were filled with the Holy Spirit, since then He is available. Since then, any person who desires to receive Holy Spirit can receive Holy Spirit. You don't have to, to convince God to give you Holy Spirit. God desires to give you Holy Spirit more than you desire to receive Holy Spirit. So, if you are having difficulties becoming full with the Spirit, listen to this preaching. And at the end of this preaching, I assure you, as you have faith, you will receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. He is available. He is accessible. You can receive Holy Spirit right now as the Word of God is coming forth. Today I'm going to continue speaking about the, 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 the fire of God and the characteristics of the fire of God. Now, wherever there is fire, there is also smoke. Wherever there is fire, there is also smoke. Now, in, in, if, if you open your Bible to Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 16, the Bible says in verse 12, Leviticus 16, 12, and here the Bible speaks about the Day of Atonement. Leviticus 16, 12, it says, He, he is to take the censer, the high priest, is to take this, a censer full of burning coals from the altar before the Lord. And two handfuls of finely ground fragrant incense and take them behind the curtain. He is to put the incense on the fire before the Lord. And the smoke of the incense will conceal the atonement cover above the testimony so that he will not die. Leviticus 16.13 says he is to put the incense on, before, on the fire before the Lord. He has to put the incense on the fire. Listen, now I have some incense at home. Incense, when you smell it, it doesn't have much, much of a sm smell. It is not very uh, fragrant. But once you put the incense on, on, on hot coals, there's, the, 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 there's this smoke coming out and, and the, the aroma will fill the whole room. Now, incense, as we know from the New Testament, represents the prayers of the saints. Now, if you open your Bibles to uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. Revelation 5, verse 8 says, And when he had taken it, the four living, living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, 
Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense. The elders were holding golden bowls full of incense. And now John explains to us what this incense was. It's, it's, he says, bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. The incense in the bowls were the prayers of the saints. In the Old Testament, it says that the high priest had to put the incense on the fire before the Lord. Only when you put the incense on the fire, there's smoke released, released, something happens. Listen, only if you put the prayer on the fire, the, something is changing in the spiritual realm. Only when, when the Holy Spirit touches your prayer life, your prayer life will change and you'll be able to pray for many hours. Your prayer will have a, another level, another dimension. It is only by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now, if you have just received the Holy, the Holy Ghost uh, as if you were born again and you've never asked God to fill you and refill you, you'll be just praying, you know, maybe a short prayer. You, you'll wake up in the morning and say, Oh Lord Jesus, I thank you for, 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 for another good day. Thank you for my family. I bless my, my kids. I bless my wife. Um, thank you, Lord. Give me a nice day. Bye-bye, Jesus. That's the prayer of somebody who is just, um, who is just praying from the flesh. Maybe five minutes. You'll say, oh, you'll say, I've prayed 15 minutes. I'm so spiritual today. Listen, if the fire of God touches you, when your prayer life touches the fire of God, when the incense touches the fire of God, there will be prayer and prayer and prayer. You'll be praying, and after you've been praying, you will still be praying. And after you, you have no words to pray, the Holy Spirit will take over. He'll give you another language, and you'll keep praying. You'll keep praying. The Holy Spirit fire will totally transform your prayer life. At times, the presence of God in, 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 in your quiet time will be so strong, you'll be laughing. At times the presence will be so strong, you will be crying before God. At times the presence of God becomes so strong, you will be dancing before the Lord. It is all by the fire of God. If you're in the fire of God, prayer is no more hard. It's no more difficult. It's no more something you have to force yourself to do. Prayer becomes a delight. Prayer becomes a joy because you're communicating with the Father. And the Holy Spirit fire is burning inside of you. The Holy Spirit fire is connecting you to the love of the Father. So I encourage you, if you feel like you are, you've grown tired in praying, the Bible says to always pray, to always pray. If you cannot pray always, don't try to force yourself. Don't try to work hard in your discipline. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill your heart. And as the Holy Spirit fire is on you, you will start praying on, on a different dimension. And believe me, you will see results. Because whenever you pray in the fire, in the Holy Spirit, you'll be praying according to the will of God. And whenever you pray according to the will of God, you know you have your requests. God will answer your prayer. Something will happen in the spiritual Whatever you've been doing before, you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Whatever you've been doing in your prayer time before you received the fire of God, forget about it. It has a completely different dimension in the fire of God. Now Paul says in Romans 8.26, and he is experiencing and, and explaining this experience. He says in Romans 8.26, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Whenever you are, you are done and finished praying in your flesh, the Holy Spirit will take over. And you'll be able to express certain things, maybe not in, in a language, but in a heavenly language. Sometimes just with groans, but God knows your intention. God knows your desires. God knows your requests. And you answer. As long as you are praying filled with the Holy Spirit. As long as you are praying in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, another characteristic of, of fire is, fire is there to spread. Now, fire is always spreading. Whenever you kindle a fire, the fire grows. As long as there is enough supply, let's say, of wood, there's the fire will grow. Fire is very powerful. Now, God knew and Christ knew that the fire of the Holy Spirit would completely transform the disciples. Those, those weak, weak people, those doubting people, those cowards would completely change. And they would turn the world around by the fire of the Holy Ghost. 
And Christ said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the very ends of the world. God was saying, Christ was saying, listen guys, when the Holy Spirit comes, you will be empowered, you will be out there preaching the gospel, expanding the kingdom of God. God knew it and he was predicting it and he was desiring and expecting it. The Holy Spirit will come. But listen, the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit empowered them. They received the Holy Spirit. They received the gifts of the Spirit. They received the gift and the gifts of the Spirit. They were filled and they started speaking in other tongues. And people were being saved. It was wonderful. There was a great revival in Jerusalem. I mean, people were transformed. The kingdom of God was moving and growing. But God told them, use my power for the right purpose. He said, you shall receive power and you will be my witnesses. But what happened? They did not use the power of God for the right purpose. And it's the same thing happening today in our churches in the kingdom of God. Many people enjoy the Holy Spirit. I enjoy the Holy Spirit. I love the miracles. I enjoy when God is moving in mighty miracles, when people are being set free and delivered. I like that. But listen, the power of God was given for a purpose. The power of God was given for a specific purpose. I enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit. Maybe some of you enjoy being in the worship and, and when, when, when the heaviness, the, the, the glory of God comes in and the fire of God is present, you enjoy that presence. But that presence must accomplish something. That presence must lead to something. And God says, don't be just consuming and enjoying the presence of the Holy Spirit, but you must go and become my witnesses. And that's something I'm really missing in the churches our days. We come into the presence of God, we enjoy the Holy Spirit, we enjoy the fire of God, but what is on Monday? On Monday you just go about your own business, forgetting about God and the kingdom of God. And God says, that's not right. Use my power for the right purpose. He gave us power for purpose. Don't misuse God's power. And let me ask you a question right now. Did the disciples, after they received the power of God, did they go and preach the gospel? And the answer is no, they did not. They at first stayed in Jerusalem. They just enjoyed the preaching of Peter. They enjoyed the fellowship in the churches. They enjoyed the breaking of the bread here and there. They were present in Jerusalem, worshiping God and experiencing the fire of God, but they were not using the fire for the right purpose. If you open your Bibles to, to Acts chapter 8, verse 1, the Bible says in Acts 8, verse 1, it says, On that day a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Hello? Listen, the Bible says, all except the, the, the apostles were scattered where? Throughout Judea and Samaria. And that's exactly what God had told them. You received the power, be my witnesses in Jerusalem. That's what he did. But he stayed there. And he said, but also you must go to Judea and Samaria and the ends of the world. But they would not obey. They were not using the power for the right purpose. So God allowed a persecution to come. And the persecution came. And now they were spread out by force. And they started preaching in Judea and Jerusalem. God was about to fulfill his commission by allowing a, a persecution to take place in Jerusalem. If you read verse 4, Acts 8 verse 4, the Bible says, Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Who were those who were scattered? It, was, it were not the apostles. The apostles, as it says in 8.1, were staying back in Jerusalem. They were coordinating. They were doing all the, 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 the coordination. But the preaching was done by each Christian. Why? Because each Christian had received the Holy Spirit. Because everyone was now filled and on fire and was now able to preach the gospel. Listen, my brother, my sister, wherever you are watching right now, God has not made you a Christian. God has not empowered you with the Holy Spirit just for you to come and enjoy church. God wants you to be out there preaching the gospel in various ways. God has empowered you. God has enabled you. Don't be sitting down. Be out there preaching. Be out there moving. Do something with the power God has given to you. The fire of God has been released on all Christians. 
if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, and every Christian can be filled with the Holy Spirit, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you can do mighty miracles. You can cast out demons. You can release the healing power of God. You can preach and things will happen in the spiritual and in the physical. And that's what Jesus said. Go and preach the gospel to the very ends of the world. Now they had to go because there was persecution. Now not only did Christ say that we would, we would um, go and preach, but he said we would accomplish even greater things than he himself did. Wow. Open your Bibles to John chapter, chapter 14 verse 12. John 14 verse 12 says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. He said, I tell you the truth. Or in the, in, in, in the Greek, amen, amen. He said, I'm telling you the truth. He said, please, people, believe me. Because he knew there would be doubting Christians. He knew there would be Christians who would not believe in the power of God, in the fire of God. And Christ emphasized, he emphasized it truly, truly. He says, I am telling you the truth. Please believe me. Anyone. Now listen, you are anyone. If you're watching right now, you belong to anyone. You are anyone. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. Wow. If the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you will be doing what he has been doing. And then he says he will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going, what is the meaning of going to the Father? He went to the Father and with the Father he poured out the Holy Spirit on all flesh. The Holy Spirit could not be released until Christ would enter the glory in heaven. The Holy Spirit was available to a few people, but He was released on all flesh after Christ entered heaven. Then the poor Holy Spirit was poured out. What Christ is saying here in uh, John 14, 12, He is saying, listen, you will do greater things than those things I have done because I'm going to my Father to pour out the Holy Spirit. And then you will receive fire. And in this fire, you will accomplish great things. Hallelujah. My listener, my watcher, listen. My viewer right now, listen. God will accomplish great things through you if you believe. You can do anything in the fire of God. Everything is possible with God by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let me ask you a question now. How can you receive the fullness of the Holy Ghost today? Now, first of all, the first thing is you must repent. Now, I'm not saying you have to be perfect. The Holy Spirit will come even though you're not perfect. But you have to repent. Repentance means if you've been going this way, you have to turn around and start moving the other way. That's repentance. The word repentance is not a spiritual term, not a churchy term. The word repentance comes from the, uh, from, from the traffic. It's a traffic term. And repentance means if you've been going the wrong direction, you have to turn around. And once you've turned around, that's when the Holy Spirit comes. You are still not where you have to be. You have still not reached perfect, perfection, but the Holy Spirit will indwell you at this point. And He'll help you to grow and mature. So number one today, if you want to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, number one, repent. Repent from your sins. And sin will not ask you whether you're a church member. Sin will not ask you whether you're tithing, whether you're doing some, some ministry in church. The sin only knows one thing. Whoever sins deserves eternal death. The wages of sin is death. But as you repent, God will forgive you. As you repent, you'll be cleansed and you'll be able to receive the Holy Spirit. Peter said in Acts chapter 2 verse 38, he says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repentance comes first. And as you repent, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Please, don't wait to the moment when you are perfect. This moment will never come. But if you repent, if you turn around, you can receive the Holy Spirit even today, even right now as I speak. How do you receive the Holy Spirit? Now, first of all, ask God to give you Holy Spirit. Ask Him. If you open your Bible to Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, the Bible says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Now, come on, let, let's be honest for a moment. I believe some of you Christians have been asking, not receiving. You've been seeking, not finding. You've been knocking and nobody opened. 
As if Christ knew our thoughts and our doubts, he said in verse 10, he re-emphasized, he said, for everyone, and you are everyone, for everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Christ re-emphasized, whenever you seek, you will find. Whenever you knock, the door will be opened. Verse 11, which of your fathers, if your son asks you for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks him for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Hallelujah. So this, these promises of asking and, and receiving, of seeking and finding, of knocking and the door being opened, these promises are only limited to one thing, to receiving the, the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't say the Holy Spirit. It says Holy Spirit because you can receive Holy Spirit in different measures. Some of you, you have received the Holy Spirit as you were born again. But today you can be refilled. You receive the Holy Spirit as you ask God and God will give you. As you seek God and God will be found, the Holy Spirit will be found. Ask Him, seek Him, knock for Him and you will receive. How? By faith. Don't try to push yourself. Don't try to work up something. Just believe that, that God has promised to give good things to you. Now the Holy Spirit is something wonderful. It's something good. Something very good. And if you, fathers right out there, uh, out there somewhere, parents, if you are able to give something good to your children, God wants to give the Holy Spirit much more than you want to give good things to your children. God desires for you to be filled with the fire of God. Filled with the Holy Spirit. So don't try to convince God. Oh God, please give me the Holy Spirit. Listen, God wants to give you the Holy Spirit. God desires for you to have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Today, ask Him by faith and you shall receive. And after you have received, after you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, don't stop asking. Keep asking Him for more and for more. If you read your Bible in Ephesians 5.18, Ephesians 5.18, it says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's an imperative. That's a command. And listen, Paul was writing to the church. To church uh, members. He was writing to Christians. And Christians already had the Holy Spirit. And Paul tells these Christians, Hey guys, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul says, I command you, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So that means the fullness of the Holy Spirit does not depend on God. It depends on you and on me. Paul says, you are responsible to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So please, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And not just once, be filled and refilled and refilled and refilled. Listen, there are many free refills in the, Holy, in, in, in the kingdom of God. There are refills of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you would read Ephesians 5.18 in the Amplified Version, it says, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but ever be filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. Ever be filled, continuously be filled, be refilled with the Holy Spirit. So just receiving the Holy Spirit once is not enough. You have to be filled and refilled and refilled. Listen, you can receive the Holy Spirit in different measures. Paul says, you guys who have been drinking wine, stop drinking wine. Those, that wine is still like a soft drink. But try the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit will to totally and, and completely transform your life. The Holy Spirit is a strong, a good drink. Hallelujah. And He will fill you. And you can drink more and more. And Paul says, keep drinking. Keep being filled. Now today as I speak, I believe some of you are hungry and thirsty to receive. And as I pray right now, in a minute, God is going to release the power, His power, His fire into your life. Now why don't you pray with me right now as I speak. Repeat this prayer after me. Now first of all, we're going to ask God to forgive your sins. That's the first requirement. Ask God to forgive your sins, repent from your sins. Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent. Jesus, forgive my sins. I am sorry. I am turning away from sin. And I will follow you from now on and forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 
If you've just prayed this prayer, your life has been changed, the sins are forgiven, you are a new creation, and you are the righteousness of God. Now I want to pray for those of you who are sick. In the name of Jesus, every sickness out right now as I speak. Sickness, I rebuke you. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Every demonic activity, you are stopping right now as I speak in the name of Jesus. Healing flow, blessings flow in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. My final prayer is today for you to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Now right now as I speak, open your heart to receive. Like a child, by faith, receive. Say, Lord Jesus, I am thirsty. I believe that you're a good father. Jesus, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you for hearing my prayer. I now receive. I now am full with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in. May God bless you. I see you next week, same time, same station. God bless. Bye-bye.